Hello world and welcome to my first animation stroke Toon Boom tutorial. First off, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jason Curran and I'm going to be your tutor for today. Rather. Um, so basically, I'm going to teach you how to use Toon Boom and then hopefully, once we start getting the basics down, we'll start animating some, some stuff and we'll go from there. Also, um, my subscribers that subscribed specifically to see my animations, I'm sorry, but you know, I get a lot of emails every day for, from people all over the world asking me for sex. Um, and then I got one email one day with somebody asking me, how the hell do I do this animation stuff? Because I want to be a YouTube king like you. I want to have all the subscribers that you have. Like You've got 31 subscribers and you're totally amazing and you rock my world. So, here we go. I'm going to show you how to use Toon Boom software as your animation software. And then, hopefully, like I say, we'll get in there and we'll start learning how to animate. So, first off, <clears throat> if you don't know how to use a computer, then I suggest you go and learn one before you get into this. But what we want to do is load up Toon Boom. <clears throat> so... My computer's running a bit slow, but yep, there we go. Toon Boom's on its way. I'm still using Toon Boom Studio 5.0. I know there's an update, and I will get it soon, but there's not that much different difference between them. So, so today we're just going to run through the basics. I'm going to run you through the basic layout so you know your way around Toon Boom. You know where certain bits are, and you don't, you know, you don't, you know what to use them for and then hopefully you can start making stuff from there because without the basics you you can't just dive in and just start animating stuff <clears throat> sorry i've got a bit of a shitty throat sucking too much cock <clears throat> so what we've got from the main screen is we have don't worry about all this here we're just going to concentrate on this bit for now so you've got you want to name your project you've got which format you want to do what what format you want to export your movie in, what frame rate, what camera size. We'll get into all that kind of stuff another time. But basically, your standard is 24 frames per second. And you want to go... So you've got things like you can do small web animations, large web animations, iPod podcasting, blah de blah de blah You know, you can do some good stuff. But what you want to do is... The one I find best to use is HDTV 720 24p. And that's just basically high definition for stuff like YouTube and all that kind of stuff. 1080 is like a higher quality, but to be honest with you, for animation, you don't really need to go any higher than 720. So we'll just go on that, just click create. Don't worry about naming it anything because it's not we're not we're not creating anything real real today. Oh. Not responding. That's a good start. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Computer's pulled through. It's a genius like me. And that's it. So here it is. This this is the screen you will look at when you come to animate. <clears throat> so let's just pull that down there and widen that a little bit. Widen it like a vagina. Sorry about my sense of humor. It's not. I know I'm not very funny, but, you know, I try to be. So I know you're looking at it and you're thinking, whoa, what is all this? Well, that's what this tutorial is about today. So what we've got here, so let's just focus first on this left bit. So we've got your select tool, which is just basically your arrow, which once you start drawing stuff in this space here, then you can start selecting bits and cutting bits out and deleting them and stuff like that. Then you've got your pencil. Well, sorry, your, your uh, paintbrush. Your pencil's there. If you click that arrow, you get extra stuff, which we'll run into in a minute. So then you've got your paintbrush, which, whoo, look at that. First animation, first bit of drawing. So you can see so using your select tool, you can select that and delete it if you want to delete it. Then you've got your, your paint tool. So basically, if you've got a circle in the screen, let's just draw a circle in there. So a nice, good, good circle, that like an eyeball, and then you go over to your right of your screen and you can select a colour, and then you can fill it in. 
which with any color you want. So let's just get rid of. Oh no, we'll keep that up. And a good thing about Tomb Boom as well is save you for. Oh, that color's a bit a bit poo. You can select it, just select in the color rather than the, the the actual circle, and you can change the color. Look at that. Or you can, if you don't like it at all, you can just delete it and get rid of it. And it doesn't delete anything else around it. <clears throat> it just basically focuses on that color as an object. So also we've got a rubber, which if you don't know what a rubber does, then, you know, I suggest you go back to school. And we've got a zoom. So you can use that to zoom in on the screen. And you can get in real close to that line and just get a rubber in. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. You know, you can do all that. I'll just zoom back out. And you can, you've got writing. So you can put Jason. Let's select a black color. Jason. Oh. Jason as a big cock. And yeah, I put it in capitals because just to show you how big it is. So you can select and just be away with that. And be away with that. <clears throat> so now also looking at these bits here, you also have these drop down arrows. So we'll go for this one just for the purpose of the demonstration. And then you've got pencil, which is to be honest with you, you won't you don't I don't really use the pencil much because the the lines are a bit thin and it's not particularly something you could I just use the paintbrush. But one one key thing to remember is the difference between a paintbrush and the paint pencil is the paintbrush will take up more lines, which will cause you to have more space there, uh, cause you to use up more space on your computer. And obviously when you're exporting your animation, then your animation will be a bigger file and probably take you forever to upload it to whichever internet site you plan to load it up to. Um, we've got standard rectangle. And the other good thing about it is, so I've just created a rectangle there, and I thought, oh, you know what, that's not too big, and that's, that's not big enough, you know. A house isn't that small. So you can select it, and you can go, whoop, make it into a square, make it into a rectangle, make it into a bigger rectangle. Make it into a smaller rectangle, and you can do exactly the same. So drop down menu again, eclipse, get a nice window in, like a nice little circle in there. In that window, select it, and you can reconfigure it. You can also reconfigure lines as well. That's a good one. So you've got, so say if I just drew a line like that, and I thought, oh, I wanted, I wanted it to connect with the corner of the square. You can just take it, pull it over, and connect it to the edge of the square. And same with that one. Just like that. Magic. You've also got a polyline. I'd very rarely use these though, because they're not particularly They're alright, I suppose, if you got time to do that, but no normally I just draw. Unless it's like say if I wanted to draw draw uh, animate a car, then you'd probably use your solid lines and stuff, but if I wanted to create a line like I've just done with this polyline, I'd probably just draw it to be honest. Because we are animators at the end of the day and we like to draw things by hand. And you've got your standard line. <laughs> Look at that, eh? We've learned so much already and we're only a few minutes into it. Jesus, eight minutes into it already. I should shut up talking. I'll probably edit it down, but I probably won't. Um... Let's see what else we've got. So dropping on there, you've got unpaint, which to be honest with you, you could just select it and delete it. Paint unpainted, yep, exactly the same thing. You don't, I don't know what you'll do that for. A drop is pretty cool. So say if you've got two different separate scenes, then you can go from so and you wanted to copy a color, you could go from one scene, select that. So let, tell you what, let's just drop a color in there. So drop that blue. So say if another scene you wanted that exact same colour, but you couldn't remember where you found it, is you'll just take the dropper and you would so say if you didn't know where it was, so it's on colour nine there, and you select it, it takes you straight to that colour to reuse and drop it in and paint on that one. Magic. 
stuff like all the other stuff we don't really need to get into yet because it's that that's just helps you to texture and really bring some depth into your animations but we don't really need to use that for now uh you've got a cutter so you could slice that right in half select that and be away be away with that little bit there um and a grabber which just helps you move the screen around and adjust to your position so anyway i think that will do for this uh first tutorial um you probably haven't learned anything at all, anything that you probably wouldn't have, but, you know, that's it. Have fun, have a nice day, and check me later when I will be doing another one. And I know you're thinking, please don't, but, yeah, I will. Thank you all.